What's going on my business associates here tuned in to another episode of Whiskey Business. My name is Jesse and if you're new here, welcome and thanks for stopping by. If you do go on to enjoy this video or just enjoy whiskey in general, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a like and subscribe. It only takes a few seconds, it's free, and it really helps me to keep the content coming. And don't forget to hit that notification bell down there to be notified on all my latest uploads. I upload every Sunday uh, morning to afternoon, uh, whether that's a review or a decapitation. And if you are interested in seeing more of me, follow me on Instagram right there. Uh, I post every time I upload and uh, I try to post new pickups that I get from the local LCBO. So this channel is all about bringing uh, Canadians reviews of whiskeys pretty readily available at the LCBO. Sometimes they're not, um, but if you're like me and you have to do most of your your bourbon shopping at the LCBO, you're pretty limited and um, the prices aren't the greatest compared to uh, other places. So before you go out there and spend a chunk of your paycheck on a new bottle, I'm here to give you some tasting notes and a little bit of a review and you know maybe you can gather enough information based off of my tasting notes to uh, know whether you'll like it or not. I know that has been really helpful for me in watching um, and reading other whiskey reviews. I've kind of developed a uh, preference for palate, so um, I like to watch certain YouTubers that have a similar uh, palate preference as me, and uh, it leads me down the road of finding good bourbons and whiskeys in general. So with all of that out of the way, let's get into some whiskey business. All right, welcome back. Today we are doing something uh, that I'm sure all of you have if you're into bourbon something super readily available and probably the most uh, budget entry-level bourbon there is available at the LCBO and that is Wild Turkey 101 that's right this is the decapitation of Wild Turkey 101 so if you have any Wild Turkey or any whiskey of preference pour a dram and let's get right into this one so it is actually Canadian Thanksgiving weekend at the time of this recording, so I figured what better time than to have some turkey than on Thanksgiving. I know this is an American um, bourbon, and it's not American Thanksgiving, but you know, it it suits, it suits uh, the Canadians out there, which again, this is uh, partially the reason why I wanted to create this channel is to help uh, fellow Canadians out there with their whiskey hunting because it can be a little bit difficult being a Canadian especially being in Ontario and being limited to only uh, the LCBO stores along with this I am going to be comparing it to an old bottle of Wild Turkey 101 uh, which is the old label and I, this has been sitting uh, so there's like about an ounce in there it's been sitting around for quite some time now uh, just being been waiting because I really wanted to compare it to the new one. I've already had a bottle of this as well and uh, I can say it is a great entry point. So without further ado, let's get this thing decapitated. Now if you're new to this channel, you wouldn't know this, but I always struggle to open the bottles for some reason. I don't know if they package them differently in Canada or what it is, but this one this is fail proof okay this there's no way they know what they're doing with their perforation they know just a little paper seal okay tamper proof if I struggle to open this guys I probably should stop drinking I will say that but without, f without further ado let's get this pop are we gonna get a nice pop beautiful absolutely beautiful uh, so they use it's just a plastic top and it is a real cork 
always nice to have a real cork way better than a screw off uh, in my opinion I know a lot of the Canadian stuff has screw off uh, at least the more budget friendly stuff so there's our and then we've got our old uh, wild turkey 101 here so uh, since since having my first bottle of Wild Turkey 101, I've branched out to a few other Wild Turkey products, such as Long Branch, um, no pun intended, the Wild Turkey Rare Breed, which I actually have three bottles of. It is an absolute stellar bourbon. Um, if you want a step up from the 101, you want to go budget barrel proof. Rare Breed is absolutely going to be your best bet if you are shopping at the LCBO. No ifs, ands, or buts. It is absolutely delicious. Um, along with that, maybe some uh, Old Forester 1920. But where I live, it's very hard to find that. And I think they discontinued it. They, they kind of like drip some out every now and then. You can still find some in some uh, smaller LCBOs. But it is pretty rare. So Rare Breed can be found on the shelf, can be ordered through the LCBO website almost always so and the price you can't beat it for a barrel proof I will say that um, along with that I've also had some R Russell's Reserve 10 and Russell's Reserve 13 both amazing uh, those unfortunately aren't available on the LCBO website but uh, you can get them in certain liquor stores in Canada you know up north Alberta stuff like that so let's get in to the nose over here is the old this is the new mm, it really brings me back to uh, the start of my bourbon journey uh, this was probably my first um, bourbon above 90 proof I started with the Evan Williams black label Jim Beam black as well as the Jim Beam White and Jim Beam Devil's Cut, uh, those I had had all of, and I had I had another um, bottle. It looked exactly like Evan Williams Black Label, but it, and it starts with an E as well. Can't remember it, but uh, those were all like forty three percent ABV um, to forty five percent. So this was my first uh, above ninety proof. So obviously it's coming in at 101 proof if you didn't know. So definitely gonna say that the uh, old one is a lot more subdued on the nose, um, almost dusty if you will. It's it's subdued and dusty, but you still get the classic cherry, tangerine, oak. I would say maybe orange, not tangerine, like some orange citrus, slightly bitter. Um, you get the cherry, oak for sure, and the new one is just a lot brighter. Um, yeah, the new one's just a lot brighter and more up in your nose, sweeter, caramel, maybe a faint little hint of butterscotch, and I'm getting a, a nuttiness, almost like a like a Jim Beam product, like dry roasted peanuts. I don't remember getting that before. Mm. A little bit of graham cracker as well. Like pie crust, baked pie crust. Oh, it's, it smells way better than I remember. I'm not getting as much cherry on the uh, nose though. Well, anyways, it's a really nice nose, not super complex, but we're entry level over here guys. So without further ado, uh, we'll go in on the old one first, but uh, if you're sipping along, cheers guys, and if you are Canadian, I hope you uh, are having or had an amazing Thanksgiving and spent time with your family and made some great memories, and of course, stay safe out there, but uh, yeah, to another great year, and happy Thanksgiving guys. Okay, so the old one on the nose, it's 
very subdued I, again a little bit of um, a little bit of cherry a little bit of orange definitely dusty like like if you've ever had a, a bottle of whiskey that was like down towards the bottom and you let it sit for months uh, and you get that like it's almost like it's watered down but dusty um, that's the note I'm talking about still caramel it's mainly caramel orange citrus and some cherry in there nothing too complex at all the finish is still going you get a decent Kentucky hug uh, it, it's mainly a warm baking spice cinnamon into the finish maybe like a faint little bit of tobacco like fresh cigar or like when you if you have a humidor and you open up the humidor um, that's that fresh sweet tobacco uh, onto the new which just smells absurdly nutty which I don't mind I actually really like um, I actually really like uh, peanut or uh, certain nuts that come across in whiskeys I like Jim Beam products so I'm not opposed to it as well as Heaven Hill Wow, yeah. Um, that old one, obviously, it's been sitting a while. So the flavors just aren't all there. The viscosity isn't there. It's a little bit thinner than, than this one. Um, but overall, the flavor profile is different. This one, this one, I don't remember having so much graham cracker and nuttiness, but... on the palate the nuttiness is very subtle I will say that so if you're not a fan of that I think you'd still enjoy this uh, I get graham crackers caramel a little of that butterscotch maybe maybe even like a little bit overdone butterscotch um, warm spice definitely baking spice rye spice you get a little bit of that rye note in there mixed with the graham cracker crust. As far as the fruitiness though, like cherry, I'm not getting it. If anything, more apricot, like dried apricot on the nose than it is cherry, which Wild Turkey 101 was always cherry for me. So it's kind of weird, but cheers. As far as viscosity goes, it's decently thin. Um, the ethanol's there, but it doesn't it doesn't punch you out. And the flavor, the flavor has a good amount of layers. It has some depth. Uh, you can pick it apart. That's why I like it as an entry bourbon. It's good to get your your toes wet as far as picking flavors apart. It's not like single note, as uh, some would say. The finish, I would say, is more on the more on the single note um, spectrum, but the the overall palette is pretty good. I would say there's at least like five to ten different notes if you really focus in there. Most of them being sweet. Now this is gonna be really odd. But that sip, I got strawberries. It's odd because I've never heard anyone say that. Um, I mean, a st strawberry is a rare note as far as I'm concerned, uh, as far as what's available at the LCBO and as far as bourbons go, strawberry is a pretty rare note. I really like it. I can't complain. I really like the strawberry. I can't complain about it. It's not the typical cherry that I'm used to, but this is a neck pour. Maybe that's why. As far as the neck pour goes, though, I, I don't 
remember this being so appealing for a neck pour. Mm. But yeah, just overall super sweet. Caramel, butterscotch. Very Thanksgiving-esque, you know, like baked pie crust. You got you got the warm spice for the warm times because I know in, in America, Thanksgiving runs a little bit later into the year. It's snowing, it's cold, it's a lot more chilly, which it's pretty chilly here now, but uh, it really gives you that nice warm hug that you need in the nice cold weather. So overall, Wild Turkey 101, I don't think you can go wrong. Uh, even if you're just using it as a mixer bourbon, I think that 101 proof will allow uh, the flavors to kind of shine through a lot more than a 90 proof bourbon or less. So for the price, even if you live in Canada, you can't go wrong for this uh, at the LCBO. Great budget uh, buy. And uh, what more can I say? I'm going to give the nose... I'm going to give the nose a... 71 it's good it's nice i don't remember the peanut the palette is gonna get a 78 i really do like that strawberry i think it's rare but my fear is that when the bottle opens up i'm gonna lose that and it might turn more cherry so um knowing that i'm gonna give it a 78 the finish it's it's medium length at best um and you know the viscosity and everything isn't uh, up to par of a barrel proof not super oily but it's better than some of the 90 proofs that i've had so um as far as the finish goes i'm gonna give the finish a i'll give the finish a 69 it's good but it's pretty one note and it's not very long so uh this is good to pick apart the palette but um anything more than that i would say you're out doing it though i do still believe that this punches a cut above for its price category for sure um you know this is um like 10 bucks cheaper than actually it's it's almost 20 bucks cheaper than uh woodford reserve the standard woodford reserve though the woodford reserve holds a special place in my heart just because I love the uh, Brown Foreman uh, tasting notes. Um, all of their bourbon is just right up my alley. So uh, I will say that I believe it's worth the extra. But aside from that, just price, uh, price per minute, like you're, you're getting a higher proof for $20 cheaper almost. Can't go wrong. Like I said, mix it, sip it, do whatever you want. But that's going to do for this decapitation. Let me know what you guys think of Wild Turkey 101. Was it your first bourbon? Uh, what was your first bourbon? Also, leave it down below in the comments. I'd love to hear what your, what your first bourbon was or your first whiskey. You know, what whiskey got you in to appreciating whiskeys more and, and actually sipping for the taste rather than the feeling? I would love to hear it. Um, I have quite the story about that. So yeah, let me know down below. And uh, like I said, leave a like. Really appreciate it. Subscribe if you enjoyed. New videos every Sunday. And follow me on Instagram for more. But that's going to do for this decapitation. I've been Whiskey Business. And I'm out, guys. Cheers. <laughs>